Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zachary Morgan, and if you're here, you should be here for World Civilizations 2. If World Civilizations 2 is not what you are after, you are in the wrong place. Otherwise, please bear with me a moment as I start sharing my screen so you guys can go ahead and get acquainted with our course for this semester. Now, one thing I do want to be clear with is um, I'm using a software called Microsoft Teams to record this because as you can see below me right here, if you can see my finger, um, it does the closed captionings for me. So that way I don't have to go in and type in all the captions by myself. So that's obviously, frankly, a lot easier for me. So that's what I chose to do. But if any of you have any trouble viewing this recording, please let me know as soon as possible and I'll do my best to fix it. In the meantime, I'm going to share my screen with you guys so we can go ahead and get started. Voila, you should see my screen. You should see my screen now. The presenting thing went away, so you should see my screen now. Again, if you can't for whatever reason, please let me know. But also, this PowerPoint will be available on Blackboard, on Moodle, sorry, along with the um, pa along with the recordings as soon as possible. I'm losing my train of thought a little bit. I apologize. It's the first day. We'll all get better. So again, you should be here sometime on August 24th to learn about World Civilizations 2 and how this course is going to work. You should have access to the Moodle course by now, so you should be able to access this whenever you want, but I would recommend this being the very first thing you access. Now, a little bit about me to introduce myself. Uh, my name, as I said earlier, is Zachary Morgan. I am from Andrews, North Carolina, which is a little town over here in Cherokee County. You can see us, we're the blue spot right here furthest west county in the entire state so pretty much insignificant to be quite honest with you a little bit about my education and my qualifications i went to western carolina university for my bachelor's i majored in history and social sciences i also got my master's at western carolina university where i majored in american history i also wrote a thesis just to show you a little bit about how crazy and obscure your topics in masters in your master's programs can get I studied immigration, converts, and traditional Theravada Buddhism in North Carolina for my thesis. So again, if any of you are going to get your master's in any topic, you might be able to study some really specific and interesting stuff. A little bit about my interests. My favorite movie is called The Lighthouse in 2019, from 2019. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, the director of The Witch made this movie. So if you like that movie, you might like this one too. Honorable mentions include Star Wars, The Empire, the Empire Strikes Back, and Mad Max Fury Road are two of my other favorite movies. My favorite book, as you can see here, is The Stand by Stephen King. My favorite, my, favorite, my favorite TV show is Avatar The Last Airbender, and my favorite band is Iron Maiden, all of whom I highly recommend. Also, a little bit of a fun fact that makes me more memorable. I am actually a triplet. That seems to always interest people. Um, unfortunately, we are not identical. I actually have a brother and a sister. My brother is a paper science engineer in Wilmington, and my sister is a hepatitis C bridge counselor also in Wilmington. So we're all doing pretty different things, which I think is interesting. Now, this is going to be your introduction section. Normally, I would love making you guys uncomfortable by having us do this in person. But of course, since we're all online, we're not going to be able to do it this in person. So what I would like for you all to do is you're going to share with me and the class and you'll be doing this by discussion forum. I actually meant to write this in here specifically. So let me go ahead and put that in there. All right, so see, does it make you feel any better? We're only in the first day and I've already made a bit of a mistake. So keep that in mind. Nobody's perfect. But just to, yeah, just to be very clear, um, I'll go over this in more detail in just a second. But the way I'm going to have you do this is go through into the Moodle orientation section of our course. You'll have a discussion form where you're going to fill all this out. You're going to tell me your name, hometown, educational history, career slash educational goals, your favorite movie and or book or TV show. I'll also accept song or band. You'll tell me why you believe history, learning history is important. Now. Just for my sake, um, please try to avoid the classic um, those who learn don't learn from history are doomed to repeat an answer. 
That is a nice answer to give sometimes, but give me something a little bit more specific. What exactly is it important that we learn from our history besides just vague mistakes? And how exactly can we use history today? So like, how do people use history today? And why is that important? Lastly, you'll also tell me something that makes you memorable. So once that's now that that's out of the way, um, please ask me any questions you might have about that between now and Friday. I want to go over some of the specific things that you're going to see throughout this course. This might seem like the really boring bookkeeping stuff, but I actually want you to pay very close attention and go through this thoroughly because this actually will help answer a lot of the questions you might want to ask me throughout the semester and it'll save us all a lot of time. Now, just to be very clear about something, we're only going to do Zoom meetings for debates and for my office hours. You are not required to meet with me at any other time. And as I'll explain in further detail in a second, even the debates and most of my office hours are only optional. So for the most part, you're not really going to have to meet with me at any set time. However, when you do join in again in Zoom, another typo. <laughs> just to explain myself with these typos for just a second, um, the reason these are in here is because I'm also teaching at a university that uses Microsoft Teams specifically and Blackboard. So a couple of these might still be sprinkled in here that I missed. Now, the way this is going to work is pretty simple. When you go into a Zoom's team, you'll see a screen something a little bit like this. Terrible movie, by the way. And you'll just this is somehow you'll interact with them. Participants, this just lets you see who's in the meeting. Doesn't really matter for you, but just so you know it's there. Meeting chat is also pretty useful, actually. This is a great thing you can use to get my attention without speaking up in class and feeling like you're interrupting or drawing too much attention for yourself. I'll actually show you how this looks in Microsoft Teams because it's essentially the exact same thing. So let me go ahead and pull this back up. Voila. So the way you'll do it is you'll click on this conversation tab right here. It looks again pretty much the same in Zoom. Pulls up our conversation section. You can just type in a message. Click submit. And voila, you sent a message that the entire class can view. I'll be if we ever have Zoom meetings, I'll check the, meet, the meet, meeting chat periodically. Then I can respond to you as quickly as I possibly can. Just to keep in mind, you can also send in attached files. You can put in emojis if you really want to. You can send GIFs, GIFs, however you pronounce it, all that fun stuff. So again, yeah, that's a great way to get in contact with me if you don't want to draw too much attention to yourself. I can also conduct polls in Zoom. I'll mainly be using this when we do our debates to uh, have people vote on the best team, MVPs, stuff like that. Camera and microphone are pretty simple. Just click on, as you can see here again, it'll look exactly the same in Zoom. Just click on the video if you want to turn off your video. Click on the mic if you want to turn off your mic. Now, actually one thing I will ask of you is to cut down on distractions. I would like for you to keep your microphone off unless you're actually speaking. That way we can cut that back on background noise and it's easier to focus on people because obviously it can be a bit hard to do that when we're all having to do this online. Next, you are also able to share content. This is not something you'll have to worry about too much, but you might be able to do it during debates if I can set it up. And sharing content is extremely simple. You saw me set it up when this first started. You just click on, and again, it looks almost exactly the same in Zoom. You click on the share content button, click on which screen or which application you want to share your screen from, and voila, everyone else should be able to see everything that you're doing on that screen. So again, pretty simple. Lastly, you can also post reactions to people's comments or to people's speeches. Just send emojis that'll pop up on your screen, thumbs up, happy smile face, confetti, all that wonderful stuff. So that's the basics for how our Zoom meetings are going to look. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to check with me. Next up, our Moodle course outline. Our Moodle course outline is pretty straightforward. First off, you're going to see the welcome section on our Moodle class, which I'll go ahead and show you right here. I still have my American history class pulled up. You obviously don't need to worry about that. All right. When you find our class on the Moodle, on Moodle, it should look something like this. First section, those of you who are in my first world Civ section 112-1, your guys' should look something like this. 112-2, 112-3, 112-4, 112-5, 112-6, 112-7, 112-8, 112-9, 112-10, 112-11, 112-12, 112-13, 112-14, 112-15, 112-16, 112-17, 112-18, 
your class should look a little bit something like this. I'll just go ahead and pull up the first section because they all pretty much look the same. So first off, like I said, you have this welcome section right here. The welcome section has some important information you will need. Syllabus, citation guides, writing guides, all sorts of stuff. So here you have my syllabus. Here's a little bit of information about me that you can pull up. It just has some more of my contact information, things like that. You also have my office hours information, which I will show you really briefly right now. This is how to get in touch with me for office hours. I'm going to hold Zoom meetings at certain times of different days that you can join in to have my office hours. They will be from on Tuesday and Thursday from 3 to 5 p.m. and Wednesdays from 4 to 5 p.m. Joining should be pretty simple, hopefully. Um, I have my own personal meeting room with Zoom, so the link's the same every time. If it doesn't work, please let me know. To join, all you have to do is to go to this link right here. This will be the meeting ID. This is the passcode to get in. Should again, should be the exact same every time. And voila, there we go. Also, we have here my citation guides and a history writing guide. This will show you how to cite things in Chicago and MLA style. You can use either one you want. This gives you some further information on how to write a good history paper and some of the things I'll be grading for when I do grade your papers. So that's the welcome section. The second section you will need to look at, which isn't in the PowerPoint, I'll put that in there before I post it, is the Moodle orientation section. This section is also pretty quick and straightforward. All I have in here is that discussion form I mentioned to you guys earlier, where you'll introduce yourself and the syllabus contract. Now, the syllabus contract is also relatively simple. You pull up your syllabus right here, which you should all have access to by now. Let's give it a second to load or whatever it is it needs to do. You scroll to the last page of the syllabus, which for some reason it formatted it like this. And voila, you'll sign here, just basically stating that you know all the expectations, regulations, and assignments for the course. You know that any academic policy is basically going to ruin your life. And you understand that you have, it's your responsibility to ask questions about the anything in the contract or the syllabus. I'm not going to hound you about the syllabus over and over. You'll sign it and date it, and you'll turn it in right here in the orientation section. Again, hopefully it should be pretty simple, but if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Also, just to be very clear about something, which I will repeat in a second, for this discussion forum, you have to follow the, all, the rules for all the discussion forums that we're going to have throughout the semester. Those are on your syllabus, and I'm going to explain them again in just a, a couple of minutes. Now, last but below that, you have the assignment section, which you can see. Let me go ahead and close that up for you right here. These are all of your major writing assignments and debates you're going to have throughout the entire semester. Now, it's, so it's important to remember, you'll have all the prompts, rubrics, and submission areas for these assignments are going to be right there. So let me give you an example. You pull up writing assignment one, you can see the prompt right here, the PDF. You can see the PDF for the rubric right here. And you can also see where you turn in the assignment right here. Notice here as well, this is going to continue throughout the semester. These assignments are restricted. If you don't get them in by a certain time, they are going to disappear. Keep that in mind. Now let's go to another one. Look at our midterm essay, for example. Again, the prompt is here. The rubric is here. The submission area is right here, again, with a restriction. It's the same for your debates, prompt, rubric, submission area, and your final essay. Your final essay is a little bit more complicated. I'll go over this more as the semester goes on, but just to give you a brief rundown. You have your prompt and your rubric right here, just like the other assignments. But there are actually four assignments throughout the semester that are related to your final essay. First, you'll have your thesis statement where you, that you turn in. You'll have your bibliography that you turn in. You'll have your outline that you turn in. And you'll also have the final essay itself, which you'll turn in right here. The details for all of these assignments are located in the prompt. If you have any questions about them, please, again, do not hesitate to ask. But all the information you need should be right here. All right, last but not least is the official course content. This is the section where I'll put all of your weekly lectures, readings, and weekly assignments. 
For example, this recording that you're listening to right now, if the technology works well, it should be posted to week one by the end of this day, actually, and at the very least by Monday morning. So it'll be located right here. For example, this is the week we're in right now. Nothing's in here yet at the time of recording, but it should all be in by Monday morning. You'll have your mandatory recorded lectures right here. Your rev, those things you'll read and watch are going to be located right here. Any graded assignments will be located right here. And any um, supplemental learning resources to boost up your knowledge or help you for assignments will be posted right here below this. So again, that should be pretty straightforward. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Main thing you need to remember is that your content quizzes throughout the semester will be posted here. So for example, your first content quiz is actually due during the third week of class. It will be posted right here under learning activities. And again, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. So that's the basics for how the Moodle course is going to look. Next, we'll go over my syllabus a little bit. This one should also hopefully be pretty straightforward. Just some basic course info. Again, we're doing this all online. The debates will be scheduled by Zoom and are optional. My e this is my preferred email right here. This is how I'd like for you to contact me. Again, this is another reminder. My office hours are on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 5 p.m. and Wednesdays from 4 to 5 p.m. And I can't stress this enough. I'm also willing to do them by appointment. If there's a time where you're both free, I will also meet with you on Zoom then. It'll be the exact same room. I can just invite you in. You should also have access to your textbook by now. It's called Patterns of World History, third edition. If you don't have access to it yet, it's available through your bookstore, online retailers, and there's an ebook version on redshelf.com. If you have trouble accessing your textbook, please check with me, administration, or the library. I want to make or the bookstore. I want to make sure you get access to that as soon as possible. Next up, let's go through my major policies. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had a talk already a lot today. Now, I want to stress that these major policies might make me look like a jerk at first. I want to stress that while I am strict on certain policies, I am willing to be flexible when I can because of the unique situation we're, of course, all in right now. So first up, late work. I'm actually only going to really accept late work on your writing assignments. You have four days to submit them, and you lose one letter grade for each day it's late. So, for example, if you turn it in on time, you can get an A. If you turn it in the next day, you'll get a B. The next day, you automatically get a C, so on and so forth. Of course, by the last day, you just fail the assignment and probably shouldn't even turn it in. Now, just to keep in mind, and you'll notice this once you go through the syllabus and the schedule, all major assignments are due at 5 p.m. on their due date. So that should hopefully keep things very simple. Every assignment is always going to be due at 5 p.m. Assignments are going to disappear from the course. Everything but writing assignments will disappear from the course at midnight on their due date. Writing assignments will disappear on midnight four days after the due date. Now, I want to be very clear about something. Under certain circumstances, I will consider taking an assignment submitted before midnight. So, for example, let's say you're doing a debate and you don't get your stuff turned in until 8 o'clock that night. If there's a good reason, I'm willing to take it without a late penalty if you get it to me before midnight. But don't just assume I'm going to. Check with me and let me know what your excuse is. On that same note, please don't panic too much about my assignment policy. I am, even though assignments disappear, I am able to reopen them for you. So if you can give me a good excuse for why you missed the assignment, I am willing to give you an extension for the assignment and should basically just let you do a little bit later. However, again, don't assume I'm going to do that. Check with me and give me your excuse. If I accept it, you're fine. And obviously just a couple of examples of legitimate excuses. If you have a very severe te uh, technology problem or internet access problem, I will accept that because of course we're doing this all online, so I, have, I can't really hold that against you. Uh, any major illness or death within the family or within yourself, Obviously, if you die, I'm not going to require you to turn anything in, but anything like that will also be acceptable. Academic dishonesty. I'm not really flexible on this at all. It's not acceptable under any single circumstance. The first time you do it, you fail the assignment. 
the second time you do it, you fail the entire class. So try not to let academic dishonesty happen. And just for the record, that means you if you ever you can never use another person's work as your own under any circumstance. Anytime that happens, no matter what, if you quote someone word for word and don't give them credit, you fail the assignment. Communication. This is just um, this one is not an extremely strict policy. It's just to sort of give you an idea of what to expect when you try to email me. Again, use my email. It's what I prefer. These are my response policies. On a weekday, I'll respond to you within 24 hours. If I don't, feel free to remind me because at that point, it's my, not, my fault for not responding. If you try to email me after 5 p.m., I'll respond within 24 hours the following morning because I'm not really going to check my email too much after 5, and I usually actually shut my computer down completely after 5 or 6, 5 or 6 o'clock. Excuse me. If you email me Friday after 5 p.m. between then and Sunday, I'll respond within 24 hours the following Monday. Now, again, just to be very clear, this is not a very strict policy. I do, of course, sometimes have to do work over the weekend. And when I do, I a lot of times have my email open. So I might respond to you over the weekend. Just don't expect me to because I may not necessarily check my, week my email over the weekend. All right. Attendance. Attendance is a bit interesting throughout this sem uh, throughout this semester because, of course, we are doing everything online. The way attendance essentially is going to work. If you are absent from the course for two consecutive weeks, you're going to get withdrawn. The way attendance works in this class, if you go two weeks and you do not communicate with me at all and you don't turn in any assignments, that counts as an absence. If so, if I basically if I don't hear from you either by communication or assignments within two weeks, you're kicked out of the course. Also, it's official AB Tech policy, especially because of the census this year, that if you do not complete an assignment within 10% of course completion, you will be dropped from the course. I've actually gone went ahead and given you that date in your syllabus, actually. So you can see right here, the 10% cutoff point is at the end of the second week. So basically, if you've not turned in any of these assignments within the first two weeks, you're also going to get kicked out of the course. If you have any further questions about that, please do check with me or with the administration at AB Tech. Let's give my poor computer a second. There it goes. There we go. So course schedule. Course schedule is very simple. It's split up into four units. Each week and the unit is going to give you the topic for that week, the readings for that week, and the assignments. So for example, the next week we're going to be talking about reconstruction and the lost cause. These are the readings you have to do for that week. These are the assignments you have to do that week listed right here. If you have any questions about that, please do let me know. One thing I do want to stress is that the schedule is subject to change. One thing I want to be clear on is that I'm never going to make an assignment due earlier than I listed in the syllabus. I will only push them back. So if it ever got to the point where I felt like I had to make an assignment to you earlier, I'll just cancel the assignment because that's my problem. That's not your fault. Now, last thing we're going to do is go over some of the assignments for this course. Few major assignments. You have four regular-ish writing assignments this semester. The first one will be 500 words. The second one, two are 1,500 words a piece. And the midterm is 2,500 words a piece. Now, I cannot be clear enough on this. Every writing assignment has to have in-text citations or sources and a works cited page unless I state otherwise. So these are not recommendations right here. These are requirements. Also, as I already showed you, keep in mind your writing assignment prompts and rubrics are already all on Blackboard. You can view them at any time and go ahead and start preparing if you want. But you so you will have access to them the entire semester. Final essay. Your final essay is hopefully still fairly simple, but will require a bit more work. Essentially what you're going to do, and again, this prompt is still on, on Moodle, you will pick the three most important individuals, communities, or events we're talking about this semester, and make an argument explaining their, their significance that in turn makes a clear central claim about the history of world civilizations. Essentially what I mean by that is you're going to make an argument about how your three topics have together made an impact on world civilization's history. 
what you essentially should probably do then is pick three topics that have something in common and talk about how they affected world history together. For example, a lot of people naturally like military history. You could three pick the three most important armies or militaries or wars we discussed, talk about how they affected world history together. A lot of people are also interested in technology. You can talk about how the three most important inventions we discuss affected world history. A lot of people like popular culture or literature. You can talk about how the three most important pieces of literature or culture we discuss affected world history. Um, you can talk about the three most important people, obviously, the three most important types of government or governments that came into being. Anything like that is totally acceptable. The word count for the final essay is going to be about 3,000 words. However, you also have what I call the unessay option. Essentially what this means is you can complete the final project in a non-essay format. Um, something is seen in the past. I've seen people do plays, make videos, films, make documentaries, make monuments, make museum gallery walks, all sorts of creative stuff. I'm willing to accept almost anything. However, you must approve this idea with me individually by October 30th. That's essentially just so I can make sure that no one's trying to do an easy project to get them out of work. Not necessarily, not assuming any of you would do that, obviously, but this essay still has to put in the same amount of work that the people are going to do writing the essay. Again, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. But do remember, there is a deadline for when you have to get your unessay idea approved. Constant quizzes. Content quizzes should be extremely simple. Again, just to remind you, they'll be posted in the weekly sections on a weekly basis when they're due. Just check the syllabus to remind yourself when any content quiz is going to be due. Excuse me. So, first, you'll have seven short answer questions. You'll pick five to answer in three to five sentences. You'll have three mini essay questions. You're going to answer two of them in two paragraphs minimum, five sentences each. Now, one thing I do want you to take away from this, answering more than the required number of questions is not going to improve your grade. I'm not going to waste your time and I'm not going to waste my time by going through these when I grade and picking and choosing which are your best answers. I will only grade the first ones you answer. So please don't waste anyone's time by trying to answer more than you have to. Just answer the required questions. Great movie reference, by the way. Hopefully you've all seen it. All right, getting towards the end, you're also going to have debates this semester. Now, like I said earlier, the debates will be held on Zoom, but since this is a totally online class, you are not required to actually attend. Bummer, I know, but I can't officially require you to be there. Anyone who cannot attend will have an alternate assignment to complete instead. Excuse me. Your debates are going to be done in two teams. You will work freely amongst yourselves in those teams, but I do recommend you split up into smaller groups within those sections. Also, I can set up small groups for you to work in on Zoom, so you will be able to work within your small groups or within your teams and don't have to try to yell over anybody. Remember, all the debate preparation is going to be done in class, and I will post instructional videos on Moodle to show you how these debates are going to work. Again, any questions about these, please do let me know. Oh, excuse me. Last assignment we're going to look at. You are going to have weekly discussion forums and creative response assignments every week. I'll basically alternate between doing one one week and one the other. Your discussion forums. And again, this is the format you have to follow for the introduction discussion form as well. For this assignment, you're going to make a response of 300 words to answer whatever the question is that I post. You will make two responses to of 200 words each to your classmates critiquing and giving or and or giving them constructive criticism. Creative response assignments. They're essentially going to be a very similar assignment. You'll still answer a posted question, but you're free to respond in some a manner besides a writing assignment. What I'd like you to still needs to have 300 words in a total or an equivalent amount of work. But again, it can be pretty much anything. Feel free to run one by me before you submit to make sure you're not skimping out on the work accidentally. By the way, in the discussion forums, please try to avoid this. I know it's extremely tempting, but I want there to be actual constructive criticism and analysis, not just, hey, you did a great job. Um, encouragement is important, but get specific with your encouragement. All right, last but definitely not least, 
I want to make sure we're all clear on how the initial office hours meeting is going to work. You all will hopefully notice that in the syllabus. The way this is going to work is pretty simple. You have to meet with me at least once during my scheduled office hours or by appointment before the end of our first semester. So you don't have to meet with me throughout the semester, but you have to meet with me at least once by September 18th at 5 p.m. Um, details on how to join my office hours, as I already showed you, are in the announcements section of Moodle, not Blackboard. There we go. So you should know where those are since I just showed you, but if you have any questions about it, please ask me. Just to give you an idea of what we'll discuss, we'll talk about any questions or concerns you have about the class as a whole, and I will quiz you a little bit about what your plans are for the final essay. Just to be very clear about this as well, you do not have to have a detailed plan for your final essay yet. I don't really expect you to have a concrete idea about the final essay until we get to the fourth unit when we've covered most of the class. However, this is going to ensure hopefully that you're already planning your final essay and coming up with ideas, and we'll just try to throw everything together at the very end of the course. So, but again, if there are any questions or concerns about that, please do let me know. I'm more than willing to discuss this at any time. So, that's all I have for you guys today. This is normally what I'd ask you if you had any questions about what I just said and we discuss it. But of course, since I can't really do that right now, I would just ask that if you have any questions, check and reach out to me in a discussion form or by email or in my office hours. I'm more than willing to discuss any of this whenever I get the chance. In the meantime, have a great rest of your week. My second, um, excuse me, my second lecture should be ready for you to view by the time you viewed this one. Um, go ahead and check that out. Go through any assignments we have for this week and keep me updated with your progress. Have a great week.